Hello. Hi, welcome, welcome. Come on into our live. I'm just waiting for Nate right now. There he is. Is it is it working? Hey, there we go. Hey, Nate. Hello. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? Good. It's been a while since we've actually talked other than, you know, Instagram messaging. True. I How see your, like, um, what's it called? Those, like, push-up challenges. Yeah, I've had to do, like, I think a thousand push-ups just between push-up challenges since this whole quarantine thing started. I'm so glad I have, like, good friends that know <laughs> that they should not send me those videos. Not, not push up changes. Exactly. Got, especially right when it started. And then I was getting ones though where it's like you had to be up against the walls right now and shoulder press things. And I yeah, no, didn't even do them. I should have posted those ones because I about broke my neck trying to do one of them. I, I saw Valeria. She tagged me and I was like, why? Yeah. Just, just why? <laughs> why do you do this? <laughs> She's like, you know, I can't do push-ups. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna be doing girl push-ups. Girl push-ups. <laughs> Still counts. How has that? Yeah. Been? How, how have you been since since all this the craziness has started with the whole coronavirus uh, quarantine and everything that's going on? Not gonna lie, it kind of sucks. Sucks. Yeah, sure. because we had like a lot of traveling plans. Like, I think cons got canceled a bunch of trips to like europe and south america got canceled i think where, where were you supposed to go next where was the because you went to was india the last one you went on uh, i went to india and then i went to indonesia and mm -hmm. then i went to um vietnam after and i was supposed to go to france the end of the same month yeah for the series kids emmys award but that didn't happen. None so. of it. I know. I haven't even gotten to go on a trip. <laughs> I was supposed to go to. I but think, you went to. You went to. Where did you go? I went to the Gambia. That was the... that. That was kind of yeah. on my own, my own trip. Um, something that I I was approached about doing the trip after I'd won Mr. Supernational, but um, that was uh -huh. kind of separate from the organization. Uh, so uh -huh. yeah, I, I I met a group out there that had gone a couple of years. This is like their second or third year, I think they'd gone. And um, every year they basically, they go to the Gambia and they go to some of the poorer schools in the area that they travel to. And uh, we delivered, you know, supplies and school supplies, food, um, clothes, and just, you know, stuff we had either brought in, flew in, or stuff that we just bought at the local markets. Um, Cause I mean, everything there is awesome. cheap. So. I want to do it like that too. What's that? that really, I want to do a trip like that too. That looked really fun. It was it was awesome. I was super happy. Yeah. I had to do that trip right before all this started. Um, but no, I, we're trying to organize a return trip. So um, hopefully we can organize something where you can come with. I don't know. I mean, who knows when all this is going to end? But uh, I was kind of in the middle of you know organizing all that and trying to get everything set up to fundraise to to donate supplies and money to the different schools in the area and then one of the clinics we visited. But, you know, for now, it's kind of on the on the back burner with all this other stuff going on. Yes. It's okay, baby steps. Baby steps. But, yeah, I keep forgetting you're a nurse. Like, I see yeah. your pictures. We know. But then when I talk to you, like, nah, 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 nah. He doesn't seem like a nurse. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> it doesn't seem like he could be in that profession at all. No, I'm not quick to judge. But thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you for risking your life to keep others safe. Thank you. We appreciate it. Um, I don't know. Honestly, I mean, I, it's it's crazy, uh, everything that's going on right now, especially in New York. I mean, I'm fortunate enough where California so far, we haven't been hit horribly. It is getting busier. Um, the peak for, you know, coronavirus cases and uh, is expected to sort of hit its peak here in the next couple of weeks or so. It's been steadily getting a little bit busier, but uh, I mean, we've been able to manage it well enough because it's not so much of a huge influx in patients. Like New York got hit all at once. Yeah. And, you know, it's sort of just totally over flooded the, the, their healthcare system, all their hospitals. And I wanted to fly out to 
uh, New York, but um, I was in the middle of a contract with the hospital I'm at right now here in California, and they've been, they're sort of at their, they're thinking they're kind of at their peak now. So hopefully, mm. you know, over the next few yeah. months, month or so, they should start to decrease in the number of cases they're getting. And California is expected to start getting hit a little bit worse in the next couple of weeks. So I feel like it's, I'm kind of in the spot where I need to be. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just crazy. I mean, this has never happened in the, yeah. or the whole situation we're all in and stuck at home and yeah, but it's, yeah, definitely. But we're saving the world by staying at home. Yes, exactly. See, no, you're just as big of a part of this as I am. Yes, I feel home. like I'm really oh. contributing to <laughs> the lives of people right now by staying at home. We only have one job, guys. Yeah. Luckily, it's not Nate's job. At home. Yeah, it helps my job when you guys all stay yeah. at home. It definitely helps. Yeah, but... so if you want to help Nate, stay at home. Please, please, please. do. Until, until this all clears up. We need everyone to stay at home, especially if you are in Southern California right now. Any of you guys listening, it's going to get worse before it gets better. So please, everybody stay at home and make my life a lot easier. <laughs> we don't get destroyed at work. It's it's getting busier. You know, there's been a few scary situations, scary patients. But um, I mean, hats off to everybody in New York because I can't even pretend like we're getting hit nearly as badly as they are because it's, it's, you know, we're managing pretty well so far. Yeah. Um, it's, I mean, like, you shouldn't, like, compare because what you're doing is still, like, really amazing. Uh, and whether you're, like, not getting hit as hard as New York, the fact mm. that you're still, like, you're risking your life to help other people, that's still a big thing. So you shouldn't undermine that. Thank um, you. What was I going to say? <laughs> how is it? In, how is it? In, are you in Thailand now? Yeah, I'm in Bangkok now. Um <laughs> It's okay. I mean, I think we have around like 2,000 cases. Yeah. I think. 2000. And like 400 deaths. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure because the number changes all the time and I could be wrong. And it's all, it's all kind of skewed. The data is all skewed because even in yeah. the US, you know, we, we, we have more capability to test people in the United mm -hmm. States. So our numbers, we, I mean, we have a lot of cases, but we also have a big population and we have um, the, you know, the, the, the ability to test more people. We have the resources to test more people. So our numbers are going to look a lot higher than a lot of different places. But yeah. um, the places that are getting hardest hit are obviously definitely New York, Chicago, any, any big cities that are kind of a dense population. I think um, like Louisiana down south and then California and Washington are the other big ones right now. Southern California, especially like the L.A. County, L.A. areas. Um, yeah. Sort of the big Areas we have the most people where it's just going to get spread a lot easier. But, but it's yeah. good you have like the resources to test people because like in Thailand, yeah. um, just to get checked is like really pricey and a lot of people can't afford it, mm -hmm. um, so they don't get tested. And I saw in the news like somebody was so scared he would catch the virus that he committed suicide. Oh. And so the numbers that they tell us are like the registered cases um but it could be much higher because there are a lot of people who probably have died because they don't have access to like health care yeah. and stuff yeah um, for sure that and then, you know sad. people that don't get quite as sick from yeah it. i mean we, yeah. we tell them not to come in to get tested because if it's not necessary we don't want yeah. you exposing other people or potentially exposing yourself if you don't actually yeah. Have uh yeah. so it's like a weird uh, yeah it's just a weird situation yeah, I feel like, like, yeah my friend was like 2020 is like in limbo like it's not really happening it's kind of like a comma between 2019 and 2021 it's like yeah. a, one of those movies where you wake up and you're just living the same day every single yeah. day there's the it's like one of those nightmare movies <laughs> it is it's literally the same thing over and over yeah. again like I, I wake up i go to work I come home, I'm self-quarantined. And if you work in the hospital right now, people are especially wary to uh, come near you because you're kind of a walking, potentially a walking yeah. COVID infection. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, you sort of just, yeah, it's literally you're on, you're just in, in autopilot at this point, at least for me, that's kind of how it feels. And it's your routines are all, you know, thrown off and gyms are yeah. closed down. And I know that's- Yeah, life's hard, gyms are closed. Oh no. <laughs> 
That's the worst. Trying to do yeah. whole job that you can, but it's kind of funny watching people. I'd say the internet though has been entertaining because everyone's got more oh time. Oh my gosh! Internet the I meme. I told myself I would never join TikTok, and <laughs> that's exactly what I did. Or, I was like, oh my god! You you're like you're everybody else though. I think everyone is now not gonna ever do TikTok. I still don't have one. I'm probably gonna end up getting one before the end of this because it doesn't look like this is gonna stop within the yeah. next month. And, you should do it. You should do it. Yeah. We can do these like collabs. It's there we go. Cool. There we go. We'll see what what do people think about us doing a collaborative TikTok. And yeah, you guys we do have a TikTok. to tell Nate to get TikTok first before <laughs> we do a collaboration. <laughs> okay, so goblet I'm drinking out of. I love it. Nice fancy goblet. Drink like a king. Drink like a king. There we go. Drink like a king. <laughs> Okay, right. so um, let's answer some questions. Yeah. Do you want to start or do you want me to start? I'm um, not going to lie. Um, I didn't really get a lot of questions, more like compliments for you. Yeah, similar. But so you probably <laughs> expected that. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of compliments, for sure, which isn't a bad thing. Everyone's very complimentary of the queen. Of they you? Love you. Well, I know for you too, though, I'm saying the ones I got oh. responses were just tell her she's beautiful or tell her that I love her. they wanted to know they, they love her for sure. Everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Seriously, though, the fans are like so, so sweet. They're so oh, I know. They're the best. And like, do you get a lot of requests like in your Instagram? What do you mean by requests? Like, like the messages. Oh, like, met, yeah, people like just trying to, yeah, a lot of the time it's just, and it's just like compliments. A lot yeah. Of was the nice. It's so nice to get, but it's so hard to like reply to every single yeah. person. Absolutely. It's tough. Yeah. And you just, I mean, you just don't, you just can't go through all of them. And yeah. I still have messages from when, like, the pageant. Yeah. Same. When I watch. I bet, and you're probably even worse than me. I think you have like five times the followers that oh I have. Goodness. So I can't imagine what you have to deal with. I get a lot. I can't even imagine how many you get. <laughs> okay, I just found the questions. One second. Okay. I picked out okay. I picked 10 of them for you. Okay. So. Oh, wow. I actually got more than what I got yesterday. Okay. Um, Let's hear it. You got, you got, this is the first one? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> hold on. Let's start from the bottom. Oh, wait, no, sorry. That was not a question. That was, um, you look like Ken. Look like Ken? I've, I've gotten the Ken doll thing. I, when I was <laughs> during the Mr. Supernatural competition, I heard, I heard Ken doll. I got called Ryan Gosling. Uh, Ryan Gosling? <laughs> Gosling, which I was all about. I was all for that one. I was yeah, for sure. <laughs> take that any day. God, that one and Ken doll. I got the Captain America. Maybe like Superman as well. Ken. Yeah, Captain America. Yeah. America, I heard. Yeah, I that one I kind of see. On Capitan America in Poland. Oh, okay. <laughs> it sounds a little fancy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got like Barbie as well. I don't really see it because, <laughs> well. Barbie, I think yeah. just like the perfect, you know, just beautiful features. It's just like the Thanks, it goes, It works for a Barbie. I think anybody that looks, you know, picture perfect, gets the Barbie <laughs> compliment. <laughs> If anyone knows Barbie, please tell them to make us dolls. Yeah. So yeah. we can like live off this fantasy that you created. <laughs> that would be that would be awesome. I would love to be a Ken doll. <laughs> just <laughs> I'll like just live a Nate up. doll. A Nate doll. A Nate doll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Um how do you fight laziness in the current situation? Oh, um so it's probably easier for me than other people, I suppose, because I still have a full-time job right now. Um, I consider myself pretty fortunate that I have a full-time job because it makes, you know, you still have somewhat of a routine. Um, but I think you just, I saw one person posted, I think, I don't even know if it was on Instagram or what it was I saw it on, but they actually wrote themselves out an itinerary for, you know, throughout their day, what they did. And it wasn't anything specific. It was basically like something, you know, for your health, whether it was exercise or going on a walk or yoga or something like that. And then they do something for your brain and for your mind. And it was, you know, do study something you've always been interested in or practice a musical instrument or read a book. And then they had, you know, like cooking food and um, they just basically, they ordered out their day. Uh, so I've kind of been trying to stick with that the best I can. Any days I'm not at work, uh, any off days, I try to, you know, 
go through my day, I wake up at a reasonable time. I try not to just like sleep in and I'll set an alarm still and I'll, you know, I'll make myself get things done throughout the day. And I think that really kind of helps, honestly, not just for just as far as it makes, it makes the quarantine go a little bit faster. You're actually keeping yourself busy, but also I think it uh, kind of helps you, helps you with your, your, you know, your mental, your, your psyche, yeah, um, sure. all this, cause it's easy to just, you know, get into a lull and even get kind of just depressed. You're not seeing people, you're by yourself. Everyone's stuck at home and quarantining themselves. Yeah. Um, I think making, trying to keep a routine best you can uh, definitely helps, helps yourself, helps a lot throughout all this. Yeah, I agree. I've been trying to like exercise. It's hard at home. I know a lot of band work and stuff. I should have stocked up on weights. And I have a couple <laughs> of friends that do have, you know, little gyms at their houses. And uh, we sanitize everything. We stay far away from each other. But you can, you know, <laughs> you can still be around people. It's not like, you know, and I'm so a nerd. Is this a thing, Nate? Tell you this. Well, yeah, you can, you can still associate with people but you shouldn't be out in big groups and like yeah. get you know going to parties and stuff like that but it's not like you have to cut yourself entirely off from the rest of the world yeah. to associate with other people yeah okay next question <laughs> i feel like i don't know if it's appropriate to ask but should i just ask let's hear You're it here. go for it it's okay it's instagram live anything goes okay quarantine from time. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. I will just say the name of the person who asked in case they're watching. Okay. Uh, so the last question was from Nanny Angelia. Oh, I didn't write the names down. I feel bad now. Uh, the next one is from Bright XXP. He wants to know if you're single. I feel like that's everybody's question. I am. I am currently single. Yeah, I do not have a girlfriend at the moment. Um, it's difficult when, like I said earlier, everyone considers you a walking coronavirus infection when you work at a hospital. Nobody really wants to wants to be around you. Uh, but yeah, no, I've been single for quite some time. I've just been busy, you know, and with the whole traveling nursing thing. I never really knew where I was going to land, where I was going to settle down at. And so it's just kind of just been focusing on myself, on, on yeah. me, just making, you know, you proving myself and whatever. But uh, no, I do not currently have a girlfriend I'm single okay <laughs> <laughs> next question from Victor underscore M N G one two three zero okay well you kind of already answered it how is your work recently work has been actually you know like our so our census our overall our overall census the amount of people that come into the hospital in like 24 hour time period time frame is down because we're getting a lot of people that, you know, don't necessarily have emergent needs or emergent illnesses um, yeah. that are staying at home, which is good. I mean, that's kind of how an emergency room should be utilized in the first place. But it's especially we're noticing it now since, you know, people don't want to catch the coronavirus in a hospital. So the last place you want to be uh, during all this, if you don't have to be there. Um, but it's, we're, you know, like I said, Southern California is starting to get more and more cases. It is starting to get a little bit busier. So it's very imperative that people here staying at home you know continuing the social distancing continuing with the good personal hygiene and washing your hands and um just being smart wearing masks when you're out and about um and uh yeah that'll help us in the long term avoid getting totally slammed so uh, but so far we're doing okay uh there are some you know we get some patients that do get very sick very quickly and that's kind of scary at times and um we're you have to gown up and all this the suits and we have to, you know, our whole policies as far as how we're like quarantining people and preventing and keeping, you got to keep the COVID patients separate from the rest of the patients because you don't want to spread to the rest of the hospital. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it's just kind of a weird, just every day is a little different, especially early on. Things were changing constantly and it's a new illness that we don't know very much about. So we're, you know, always trying to follow up with whatever the CDC is doing research on and trying to our best to, to stay up to date on all the research and stuff that's coming out about the disease um, and just best way to prevent it and treat it. And uh, it's just constantly changing landscape. It is getting a little bit busier, but so far handling it okay. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's scary. There's a little bit of anxiety in the hospital yeah. and, you know, just because people are afraid of catching, you know, anytime you're working with those patients, you're at a very high risk of contracting it. Yeah. So, um, but, you know, try to keep as optimistic as I can throughout all of it, for sure. 
Thank you for your bravery. You, I know it sounds sarcastic when I say it, but I actually do. No, I know. I, 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 I do. I, you we, know me. <laughs> no, I know you. I do appreciate it. You guys, it's very sweet. All the all the support that we've been getting all throughout the world um, has been really cool to see. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for all the support. You guys should um, put a clapping emoji in the comments <laughs> to show your appreciation for Nate. Hold on, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that too. Hold on. Give me a second. We, well, we can comment. I didn't even know we could comment. I'm pretty new to Instagram Live, to be honest. I don't do it very often. I'm sure. I was on Instagram Live like every day last week. Were you? I should maybe yeah. I should. Do, should I do more? Is that something I should do more of? If anybody, if you have ideas of what I oh, should yeah. talk about. Look or, at all these you know, clapping hands. Uh, yes. Yay! <laughs> Thank you for. Very sweet. Very supporting sweet. Supporting Nate. Thank you. I Thank feel you. like, yeah, I feel like doctors and like frontliners get like, don't get appreciated or thanked enough for the hard work they do. How many times they have to risk their life to give another person life. And I know that sounded like kind of. No, I, I get what you're saying. No, yeah. yeah. But it is cool. Um, I mean, you don't, you don't do the work for praise and thanks and stuff but yeah. it's obviously it's cool when people do recognize your work and appreciate what yeah. you're doing so thank you to everybody we really do and anybody that's ever you know commented or messaged me i, I do see that stuff if i don't respond i apologize um but thank you so much yes 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 what a time to be alive during this coronavirus it's a weird time it's just something like i mean we're going to talk about this for it still doesn't yeah feel real. like in like a couple we of years to your like children or your grandchildren yeah i saved the world yeah I saw you something. could actually say that you could say no, that i saved yeah. the world yeah that's what i'll tell my grandkids <laughs> i saw somebody posted it like what did you do during the you know the saved big the pandemic of 2020 and they're like i pretty much just was on instagram and watched funny memes and made videos on tiktok <laughs> and they told me to do it <laughs> yeah, they told me to do it <laughs> well, okay uh, one second. Next question. Oh, okay. So Rahul Singh also, it's not a question. He said he just wanted to say thank you to you and all the nurses and doctors around the world from India. Thank you, Rahul. Appreciate it, buddy. Um, okay. From the same person, Nate, what do you think is more important, humans or economy? Ooh, that's actually, that's a good question. Um, you have to say humans. I, I mean, like, that's, that's it, it, it. That's the answer. It's, it's humans. At the end of the day, that's what matters. You know, people matter over money and over, you know, economy and, and superficial materialistic things. Um, I, I, I do understand where people get frustrated as far as, uh, you know, it's, we're putting the economy kind of at a standstill, a lot of freeze at a hold, and it's causing a lot of devastation in a lot of different places. But you have to look at the bigger picture and you got to think about, you know, the people, the vulnerable populations that can get very, very sick from this and die very, very quickly. And we've seen that um, all over the world. And, um, you know, and I personally have seen patients that, you know, relatively healthy, one day living their life totally normal, and then all of a sudden, you know, just, just get very sick very fast. And um, people die very fast from this. So, uh, you got to look at the bigger picture and, uh, you know, economic growth, we can bounce back from, but, you know, it's human lives. That's, a whole back in our that's life. something yeah. you can bring back. So uh, people definitely always going to take precedence over the economy and money. Yeah. And I feel like I don't want to like, how do you say, it? I don't want to target anyone, but in our time, of living, I feel like a lot of businesses and people tend to forget the importance of just being human and our life that we live. And yeah. we've like, people forget that, you know, money is not everything. Yeah, for sure. Um, I and think if this quarantine doesn't prove that, if this, if we don't learn that through this quarantine, then I think us as a human race, have done something wrong that we would just go back to like our normal lives. I think yeah. this is like a lesson that has to be taught. And if it has to be taught this way, the hard way, then we might as well take the opportunity to learn 
Yeah, absolutely. I agree for sure. I think, you know, there's a lot of negativity and surrounding everything that's going on right now, which is, you know, it's warranted and it makes sense that it's, it sucks what we're going through and the fact that we all have to stay home and the whole world is kind of shut down right now. But I like to think that a lot of good will come from this at the end of the day, you'll really start to appreciate, you know, people and just what that means to you. I mean, when you're stuck at home by yourself, you're not around other people, you realize how much more the people in your lives do people in your life mean to you yeah and matter and um and i think yeah people really start to appreciate one another a lot more hopefully from this and um i think there are multiple different things that hopefully will good fruitful things that'll come from all this in the end so i like yeah. to try to focus on that um even though yeah like it's okay to be unhappy with how your 2020 is going yeah. anybody's ours is especially not going how we expected <laughs> but i think and that's everybody else is sort of in the same boat so yeah. But, you know, I think glass half full mentality, I think a glass half full mentality, things can be worse, things will get better. And, you know, there's good things that can come from this. Yeah, for sure. All right. Next question. Okay. From Ruhiman02, what motivated you to join a male pageant? And tell us about your experiences. So, I don't know. I mean, I feel like my 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 whole journey through all this was probably a lot different than most people. Um, I didn't really intend to get into male pageantry. That was uh, I moved to California, Southern California, kind of around the LA area. Um, would have been last August, uh, so about eight or nine months ago now. Um, as a traveling nurse from Omaha, Nebraska, where I worked as a nurse you know uh, whole life play football I was you know very into athletics and my academics and I was never a model I was never an actor or really in any kind of theater any sort of performing arts or anything like mm -hmm. that um, it's something I always was interested in and I kind of wish I would have done more of that uh, growing up but I was kind of always busy with everything else and you know growing up in the Midwest there's sort of a negative stigma attached to doing anything like that it's just not what most guys do but when I moved out here, uh, I looked into modeling. I thought that'd be a good way to, you know, make extra money on the side. And um, so I had a friend of mine that helped me make a modeling profile. I'd done like one photo shoot with them uh, before coming out here. And uh, just for like a low budget, you know, clothing line. And he helped me make a profile. And I submitted that to an online forum, basically, for, for models and actors to get uh, scouted. And I was approached about Mr. Supernational USA, and they told me that it was taking place in, the auditions were taking place, it was a two-day audition process taking place in LA, and uh, they asked me if I wanted to audition, and I initially I said no, I was like, I, I wasn't even, I was, I was kind of questioning even doing modeling at that point, and they asked me again, they followed up with me, and I eventually agreed, um, and yeah, I competed in that, I ended up winning. Very much to my surprise, uh, I was kind of panicking a little bit because I was like, holy crap, now I got to go to Poland. I got to do all this. I had to call my parents and explain. I'm like, hey, look, I, like, I know I didn't. Hey, guys, I won. <laughs> yeah, I did. I didn't even tell anybody I, I was going to audition for the USA. I didn't think I was going to win. I seriously had, I was like, oh, this will be a good, you know, opportunity to get my foot in the door. I'll meet some people that are in the industry because I didn't know anybody in LA. I didn't have any way to get into modeling or acting or any of that. So I thought it would be a good start. Um, but yeah, I ended up winning. Went over to Poland. I had a great team that helped, you know, prepare me for everything, sort of coached me through the industry and, you know, what you have to do for a male pageant, how to walk in a, on a cow walk and not look horrible and like a total brute when you're walking down the, down the runway. Um, and yeah, one, you know, one thing led to another. Obviously, I ended up winning. So very grateful for the opportunity I got and, you know, where I'm at right now. Everything's a lot of different opportunities now and, uh, excited for what's to come going to continue to look into you know more modeling acting i've started to take acting classes um it's a lot of fun stuff that i've always been interested in doing but i just never really got involved in when i was growing up i get to do now so um, and also at the same time still work as a nurse so it's kind of get the best of both worlds right now so very fortunate i was just about to say that best of both worlds <laughs> yeah very fortunate that i get to do yeah. it so what advice would you give to like people who might be interested in joining male pageants or maybe like what is something that people tend to like a common misconception that you want to like tell? 
Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I'd say number one is stop thinking, stop caring about what other people think. You know, that was my biggest thing. One of the biggest things holding me back was, you know, I was afraid what other people would think. I didn't, like I said, I didn't really come from a background where that's what people did. You know, it's, um, it was almost, you know, looked at as feminine modeling and it's kind of like a conceited and it's not necessarily like that. I think there's, it's a lot of the good that comes from the pageantry, honestly. I mean, it's a lot of, I think that's one thing that I really did learn when I was over there was it's a lot of guys that are just, you know, regular guys. A lot of them wanted to do good, big things, not only for themselves, but um, for, you know, just around the world. They wanted to be able to make a difference and when winning, when you win the, the, the competition, you have somewhat of a platform where you can accomplish a lot of stuff that previously, you know, you didn't have opportunities to be able to do. Um, so like for me, for an instance, I know I was able to do, I've always wanted to do um, charity work in different, uh, you know, third world countries, um, as far as, you know, medical mission work. And uh, I got that opportunity to go to the Gambia. And it's something that I'm going to continue to follow up with. And um, hopefully for over the next few years, at least uh, be able to continue that work. And um, I wouldn't have ever really gotten that opportunity without winning. So I think number one is, you know, you just, if you're in, if it's something you want to do, you're in and doing it and it's something you're passionate about or it's something you know you, even if you're not passionate about it just you gotta don't live for other people don't care what other people think do what you want to do you know follow your own even as cliche as it sounds follow your own heart follow what you yeah. do and, and take do your own you know wade through make your own path and um it's easy to cut yourself or sell yourself short and settle just because you're afraid of what other people will think or you're afraid that you'll fail. And so I, you know, try as much as you can, try to experience as much as you can, do as much as you can do. And um, I think you're never gonna regret those decisions to just go for it. So that would be my biggest, biggest suggestion, I guess you could say. <laughs> so inspiring. <laughs> Super inspiring on this Instagram live. <laughs> All right. Okay. How about you ask me some questions and then okay. maybe like three or four questions and then we can move to our own accounts um, and continue asking each other. I'm actually, I'm on my account right now. Oh, I mean to my account. Your account, okay. So you'll stay on your live and then I'll request to be on You'll your join? Account. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah. Um, all right. You ready? Yeah. I write down people who ask these questions, so I apologize. But if you recognize your question, you can shout it out. Um, a lot of them were repeated kind of too. So, but question number one, why did you choose Miss Supernational and not another pageant? What was your reason behind choosing that pageant in particular? Um, actually, this is a new question. Really? I, yeah, I, I get a lot of like repetitive questions, but this is a new one. So thank okay. you. Um, yeah, a lot of people do ask me, like, why didn't I join Miss Universe or Miss World? Um, I just feel like Miss Supranational was a pageant that matched me as a person the most. Um, I'm not trying to say that the other pageants are not good. I think they're all equally as amazing. Um, but I feel like Miss Universe kind of already had an idea of who they wanted and it was maybe at the time too, how do you say, like mature for me. The pageant was too mature for me and I didn't feel like I was really ready to join. And I felt like Miss World was um, maybe not too, I felt like it was maybe too serious for me. And to be honest, I joined mainly for the experience. I didn't think I was gonna win like you. I didn't think I was gonna win the even the national one. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, but now that I went like three weeks in Miss Supranational, I got to know the people of organization and stuff. I'm really happy that I joined Miss Supra because I feel like it's more me. It's more, how do you say, like up to date with, you know, trends. It's more young, more lively. Mm -hmm. And I'm not someone who likes to be told what to do. Um, yeah. So it's really refreshing when like we're talking like with Andre or with Gerhard, they never tell me like, you have to do this. You have to do this. It's yeah. always like, what do you want to do? And we yeah. support you and everything. So it's really like an individual for sure. Yeah. It's really a breath of fresh air to be honest, because it's not what I had expected. Mm -hmm. 
But I think yeah, a lot of people so, yeah, that's like sort of a misinterpretation of of it is it's this cookie cutter, you know, superficial yeah. Yeah. event. Definitely it's not. really not. I was I mean I was fortunate enough where I because I'll be honest, I was the first one if you told me about a male pageant or even, you know, Miss Universe or any of those um or Miss Supernational, I would think it's you know, it's all about beauty, it's all about looks and you gotta be, you know, yeah. cookie cutter perfect beauty queen. But I think at least for in my experience with Mr. and Miss Supernational, it's not that way. They look for an individual, yeah. somebody people can they look relate for to. a person, like a yeah. real person. Yes. Because like we're not we're not, you know, gods or goddesses. No. We're not no normal you people. know, whatever. We're real people. We are people who you can connect with, people who have gone through the same experiences as you. And I think you and I can kind of like with with our personalities it's like relatable for people and i think yeah. that's what they want they want someone who's approachable relatable not someone who thinks that they're like much better than everyone else yeah um for sure yeah and i was like i mean i won my national pageant i still had my braces on so. <laughs> oh, <seriously? laughs> yeah i so got that, those pictures that Everybody, moment i was like okay i know they're not gonna... and, and braces photos i do i would love to see that I'll put I'll put totally different. in my braces too. <laughs> yeah, but um, that is the normal person thing to have to go through at the braces. Exactly. The worst. Oh, oh everyone go through, well. A lot of people have to go through it. Yeah. I had headgear. And when I, I, was, I had to wear headgear at nighttime. I oh had, my goodness! Yeah, right. I'm wearing like Invisalign okay. now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like when I won, like during the like the three weeks. Um, yeah, I always looked at the other girls and I knew like, okay, I don't look like them. I'm not, you know, the perfect measurement and everything. But I have a personality, like I have my personality that makes me different from everyone else because we're all so different. So hopefully that's good enough. Yeah. Um, so that's really what I use. Like I knew with my, I couldn't change my body in three weeks mm -hmm. to look like the ones I wanted to look like. So yeah. I just like to like work with what I have. And I think exactly. that's what they look for. They look for how you are as a person, how you push yourself, um, how you choose to make the best out of like a situation that makes you feel maybe not so good. Mm -hmm. They don't really look for the finished product, I think. Yeah, I, yeah exactly. It's you, you know, you're a regular relatable person. And I think at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's a job interview. I mean, kind of, if you sort of, they want to find, you know, the best space for the organization, someone they think represents all the values that, that Mr. Supernational, yeah. Miss Supernational want to embody. And, um, so another reason I think, I know we're both very honored. We were chosen. It's a really cool yeah. thing. Uh, knowing, considering all the other awesome candidates and all these other people that work so hard for it. Um, it's just, yeah, they, they want somebody and, you know, relatable people are, those are the ones you want to, you want to, you know follow yeah. and hear what they have to say because at least for me personally anybody you don't want cookie cutter you don't want the same thing no. here you want yeah. something that's you know real um yeah. which you are very real so thank yeah. you you too <laughs> great supernational thank you <laughs> all right you have question number two let's see uh all right, so here, what country would you like to visit during your reign? One that you have not visited yet, where would you like to go? I'm sure there's a lot. I want to go everywhere. Seriously, like, Andre has told me that, like, a bunch of countries that we would have gone to or were planning to go to that I had never been before in my life. And I was really excited about that. But then Miss Corona decided to waltz right. her way. Um, but that's okay. I'm sure there will be more opportunities. Um, but I think the one I wanted to, like a country that I had never gone to before, um, maybe Brazil. Brazil. Yeah. yeah. Because we have a Miss Brazil and I had never been there before. And I see like a lot of documentaries and movies about it. And it would be Brazil. nice to finally. Sure. Go. <laughs> my buddy Italo too. I'd love to. I'd love to go to Brazil. I don't oh even know yes, Mr. Honestly. Brazil. <laughs> yeah, which is amazing. I I don't even know honestly. If I was asked that question, I'm not even sure. Everywhere. Yeah. I mean, it was hard for me to decide. To 
Yeah, you have to come to Thailand first, I and then you can decide where you want to go next. <laughs> yeah, I would love to go to Thailand. Just, if anything, to eat the food. Obviously, yeah. I would love your company, but exactly. I, the food is amazing. So oh, good. my gosh. You should come here, and then I will take you to my grandma's hometown, where my mom grew up. Yes. Um, I don't know if you saw, like, I went there for Children's Day, and I donated a bunch of, like, yeah. um, sportswear. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> And yeah, they would love to see you. Like, Valeria, oh God, I'd lo we'd love to go to Puerto Rico too, Valeria. <laughs> yes, I would love to go to Puerto Rico too, obviously. I thought that yeah, was like, to to didn't Rico. have to be said. Puerto Rico <laughs> first, every other country after. <laughs> All of them. Yes. Sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, uh, and we have beautiful elephant sanctuaries as well. Cool too. All of the above. Yeah, if awesome. We could go everywhere and we would love to go. I would love to do that. All right. Yeah. So we're going to go with Brazil. Brazil's on the list amongst other countries, obviously, but. Yes, of course. All right. Question number three. What, oops, where'd it go? What are you studying in school right now? I am studying advertising and public relations. Advertising and public relations. You have speech class today, right? Yes, yeah. I had a presentation today. What's the presentation on? A Can moment that changed it? my life. It's what? A moment that changed my life. A moment that changed your life. I'm going to guess yeah. it has to do with... <laughs> Is it winning? Mr. No, I, I... Actually, after I won, the school sent out like a mass email to announce that I had won the Super National. Oh. Yeah, so I That's think cool. everyone... Uh, knows about it and I didn't want to talk about it because then they'd be like um, oh of course you're gonna talk about her winning a pageant whatever. that's cool yeah so I chose something else to talk about okay yeah that's like that, that makes sense all right oh, I like this one what's some what's something weird about you oh, like one everything does that count does everything <laughs> count I'm just a weird person in general um <laughs> uh i don't know i'm just really really awkward i don't think like people don't really see it but i'm really awkward yeah. like i in big groups yeah i'm just like whoops i turn awkward. into like Eep, and i don't <laughs> don't say anything i think yeah, you maybe you notice work. as well like i don't say much um that often but when i'm like doing a live yeah um people i know it's it's of course it's easier but yeah i'm not really good at small talk which is not good because i just feel like <laughs> if i said something that person would think like why is she asking me this weird question like yeah. why do you think like how come there's no yellow dolphins or something like that it's like something i would ask the craziest you know? thing just to get the conversation on <laughs> small talk's hard though i hate small talk i would rather honestly though have a conversation with somebody that's weird and says something yeah. like that, I think that breaks the ice way better than, you know, like the weather or like, oh, what are you yeah, doing? Just like, than that? Yeah. Um, small talk's overrated for sure. I, I agree. <laughs> but yellow dolphins. It's our job, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I know we just do a lot of small talk, especially my job. My God, when I walk into a room, you have to. Oh, yes. Hey, how are you? Well, a lot of it is you're in there doing, <laughs> going about your business, and you can't just like be awkwardly quiet. You have to talk about yeah. something. So and then like, there's like that awkward yeah. pause where both of you don't really no want to say anything, but you're not sure if you should say something. So you're just like, yes. Okay. He's like, all right, see you later. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right. What's, I don't even know what question this is. Number four, five, four? I four, think, yeah, maybe? four. Okay, let's make it the last question because it's already been okay. one hour. This is a good one. All right. What, <laughs> what was your first impression of Nate when you first met? This is my favorite question so far. Did I tell you this, uh, this already? I, maybe we talked about it. I don't remember. Refresh my memory. Oh, my <laughs> God. It was so funny. Okay. So, long story short, I was, uh, you know, I was judging for Mr. Supra mm -hmm. National the day after I had won. So, it was, I, I guess think. some people would say I was very lucky yeah. to be amongst the judges, to be judging a male pageant. Um, so, yeah, I was so hashtag blessed. Um, <laughs> and honestly, like, Nate didn't really stand out for me. 
Ouch. Who stood out for you? <laughs> um, you should have been it? Mr. Supernatural. <laughs> no, I mean, my vote was not really, like, the majority vote. But um, I think the one that stood out for me the most was, if I'm not wrong, Czech Republic and Brazil. Oh, those, those, those are solid. Solid picks. Oh, yeah. yeah all, um, all I mean, you were okay, too. <laughs> <laughs> you were you squeaked yeah, by. Right. <laughs> low-key low key Anne wishes that she was having this Instagram live with either Mr. Brazil and Mr. Czech Republic. <laughs> Yeah, both of them. No. Um, <laughs> up with Capitan America. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Capitan America. No, but um, when you came out, I liked your energy. Um, you looked like very humble, and I was like, yeah, okay, like this guy seems okay. And then um, top five. I think you were like, who was top five again? It was you, me, Brazil, Brazil, Peru, and uh, me, Brazil, Poland, Peru. Um, um, holy cow, me, Brazil, Poland, Peru. I'm totally blanking. I should know this. It's been forever now. Is it doesn't Venezuela? Oh, yeah, yeah, it was Venezuela. Okay, yeah, so, um, because I didn't really know you guys personally, I felt like I felt kind of out of place. Like, how can I judge it's tough. someone? Okay based sure. on their looks like this is not who i am mm -hmm. so i really like tried to look at very small details and at first i was think i was more for like czech republic peru and then i told you why um <laughs> but then when you answered your question i was like okay i choose captain america capitan america yes. um i think your answer was um how do you say it was very humble it was very true and very relatable um i don't remember what it is anymore but i remember that's how i felt in the moment and i i was also thinking like who would i want to work with for the next year true. and yeah i was that's why i chose you um but then there was a moment <laughs> there was a moment where um I had like a click second of like, oh my gosh, I think he might be one of those like American, like stereotypical jock guys. And I was like, no, why did I choose him? She <laughs> regretted kidding. the decision immediately. And then she met me and she was like, wow. And then I <laughs> met him and he was actually very nice, like, very God, humble, very nice. Bring humble. over Brazil or Poland or anybody else. For sure, for <laughs> sure, I choose you. <laughs> now she's stuck with me. Yeah. Wow. That was after you carried my bag and I was like, oh, okay, fine. Okay. That <laughs> I made up for it. Should I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, but that was my thought at first, and now I'm very happy that he's Mr. Supernational, and I'm glad that we are able to work together. Yes. Even if it's from a distance. <laughs> True. Hopefully, this will clear up, and at least this summer, before you know, we have to hand over our our rain to somebody else yeah do one at least one trip together and <laughs> yes please just one thailand or brazil or wherever yeah maybe one trip because that'd be fun but yeah. we'll see we will see fingers crossed fingers crossed yeah right. so before we uh well i go before i go to my account um i noticed that there's a lot of indonesian pageant lovers watching um so what you need to say is, okay. Aku cinta, Valeria taught me this. Okay. Aku cinta, Indonesian pageant lovers. Aku, cin Aku cinta, Aku cinta, Indonesian pageant lovers. Yes. With a little baby heart. Exactly. Oh, I taught you Aku so cinta. well. <laughs> Indonesian pageant lovers. <laughs> exactly. Know. All right, so are we switching? Are we? Am I staying on here, and you're switching to yours, and you're joining back on? Or are we? I don't. Oh, know. I think we have to start again because I'm the host of this live. Okay. Um. So I will end this, and then um, you can continue your live, and I'll just be right back. Okay. Um, and I will switch to my account, and then we can continue the rest of the questions. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Wait. Hold on. Enjoy. Let me just write like a small announcement. Okay. Um. Do what you got to do. Continue our 
Do I stay? Do I, I stay logged in on this one though? Like I stay on the same one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then you just join. That makes sense. We'll have to go back through all these all these comments. Sorry, guys. We've been a lot. We'll check them out. I... Oh. Uh. Okay. There we go. Okay, so I will end go. this and then we'll start again. Okay, see you in a minute. So for anyone that wants to keep watching, um, Nate will go live on his and then I will send a request and we will do it together. I'm gonna stay um, fine. Yeah, so if it stops, just do the live again and then I'll come in after. Okay. Um, so go see him on his live and we'll answer the rest of the questions there. Perfect. Okay. Let's do it. Bye-bye for a Bye. minute. Bye. Thank you for everyone who is watching. Thank you, everybody. And maybe see you in the next one. Thank you. Thank you.